There have been a number of new subscribers to this channel of late, so I'd imagine that a lot of them probably have no idea what this is. The Compact Presario 5000 tower computer that I picked up for $10 at the thrift store. That's been hot rotted. You can see it's got an Intel Celeron sticker on the side, but it has an Intel Pentium 3 CPU. It's a PGA 370 socket. It's also had an upgraded optical drive installed and all of that. I think it's even had an upgraded hard drive. If you remember, my original goal for this machine was to use it as a malware test box. So I installed a small capacity hard drive and Windows 98. However, the plans changed. Of course, you then come over here. I picked up the computer on the bottom, which is the Lightning PC which is a Pentium 3650. It's a little bit slower and more well-versed for what I'm going to do with it. So I went ahead and I took the drive out of this, put it into that, and put the drive that came with this back in it. It's about a, I think it's a 40 gigabyte Samsung drive. So, I haven't done anything further with this. It's just been sitting on the floor, awaiting its turn in the limelight, and that time has come now. What we are going to do in this video is set up Windows 2000 Professional. This machine is actually eventually going to be the Windows my Windows 2000 Unofficial Updates project box, and there will be a video about that, but not tonight because <laughs> I'm actually kind of tired and I really do not want to do too much computer work tonight. The other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to attempt to replace the hard drive cable with this, which is a single device cable, which I think is more appropriate for this because it's only got the one hard drive caddy. I don't have the second one. I don't really think I'm ever going to get the second one, and I wouldn't even use it if I did, so there's no real point in wasting a dual device cable when it's not even going to get used. And I can use this actually for another project that I think you already know about, the Prosys Pentium 4, former Pentium 4 box, it's now an Athlon 64 box. The Asus motherboard I put in there, being a complete piece of junk, apparently has got no idea what a single device IDE cable is and freaks out when I've got it plugged into the primary IDE channel. So, I'm going to try this cable. For all I know, the primary IDE channel is bad on that board, but I don't think it is. I'm pretty sure I've used it. It's worked fine. I'm going to upgrade the RAM. I actually don't even know what this is. What does the sticker say? 128 megs, I presume, of PC-133. That's what the system needs. I don't know what's installed in there. It's present. I can't even see it. Uh, 128 megs. So 256 megs total will be in there. That should be enough for Windows 2000. If it's not, I can bump it up. I'm sure I've got some larger modules in my collection. Nonetheless, we got to do that, and we got to install Windows 2000. I don't know, I may need to replace the CMOS battery, but I shouldn't have a problem with that because I bought a whole lot of them for rather cheap, and so I should have a lifetime supply of CR2032s now, but anyway, gotta actually stop yakking and start working. I may find an Ethernet card and install that as well, while I'm here. Okay, so I installed the cable, it fits really nicely, I also installed the second memory module. Now it's going to be a big question whether or not it likes both of those, and if not, which one is actually causing the problem? I think first, I'm going to have to clear up some of these projects. And there's a lot of things going on right now. Okay, that's much better. Now we're cabled up, I got the mouse hooked up, and everything hooked up the way that it's supposed to be. Here we can see back there, port arrangement. It's got four PCI slots. This power supply puts out a maximum see if we can actually get it on the shot here. Doesn't look like it. Oh yeah, there we go. 145 watts maximum. What a powerhouse. And it's not even plugged in. <laughs> wow, what a dork. Okay, well anyway, so we'll do that live on camera so that you can actually see the entire process. Watch this. It's probably going to explode in my face now that I have the cover off and I've basically got my face over top of it. Oh, it comes right on, doesn't it? Let's see. Get any video out of it? 
The answer to that question is a big fat no. Of course not. So I'm going to have to do some troubleshooting. Which basically means I'm going to have to shoot the trouble. Now well, I pulled both. And it does actually come up. When I just pulled the uh, single device cable that has the hard drive on it, the system did not complete the power on self-test. So we'll shut this off. And we'll plug this cable back in. Let's see if we still have a problem. I suspect that we will because my life is a comedy. Or maybe this cable will not go into the slot. Well, it works fine. So, there we go. Seize the hard drive and the two CD-ROMs. No issue whatsoever. Now it's going to try and boot the uh, Windows XP installation that's currently on the hard drive. At least I think it had XP on the hard drive. Operating system not found, so maybe I erased the hard drive. I don't know. Unfortunately, I can't actually find my Windows 2000 disk right now. So I cheated a little bit. You know what they say, cheaters never win and winners never cheat, but... Eagles may soar, but weasels, the animal not weasel to HTM, do not get sucked into jet engines, to borrow a phrase from UXW Bill. I burned another one. Of course, the images are freely available on the internet. You'll need to supply your own license key, but I have one, so that's no big deal. And I know where I can even find it. By the way, if you hear any wind noise, I do apologize. Just complaining about there being no operating system. So we'll just open up one of the optical drives. I don't really care which one. It doesn't really matter. It's only a CD, so... No, that might not work. Press any key to try again, it says. So. I don't know where the any key actually is. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Something tells me that isn't going to work. That's yeah, not working. Let me do some troubleshooting. Okay, I just put it into the other drive. So we'll see if it works now. Or if maybe the hard drive is holding it back. And there's a problem. Okay, well that's annoying. Now, oh, when all else fails, use a boot floppy if I can find it. Yeah, I'd like to see it stop working with that. There we go. Boot floppy! Well, that looks kind of broken. There are hard drive partitions. CD-ROM. He's a junk. Okay, I think that single device cable is going to be a failed experiment because pull it out and it boots just fine. Seems kind of weird that a computer system, the BIOS can figure it out and get everything right but you can't actually boot it, and it screws around with all the other devices. It just seems kind of odd to me. I gotta wait for that to start, then I can shut the machine off, try and put it back in, and see what happens further. The fact that even though there were hard drive partitions, or at least it reported hard drive partitions, and said that there was no operating system really isn't too enamoring. I don't really like that. So there's probably something wrong with that. With that. Okay, well this is impressive. I went to go try it one more time just to see what would happen. Now it's working. 
So I don't know. Maybe there was just something stuffed up with it. I didn't appreciate the fact that I put a CD-ROM in before I started booting the system. After I, after I had booted up the system, I don't know. That seems kind of stupid, but I'll leave it to Compaq to design something like that. I guess on the bright side, at least it's not an Asus motherboard, unless it is. I don't know who actually is the OEM for this. But given the age, I presume it might actually be a Compaq house brand, house part. I don't see anything that would suggest to me. I know it's a Taiwanese board. What does that say? Fujicom or something? I don't know. That doesn't really mean anything. I don't see any telltale markings from anybody on this board, so I'm going to assume that it's probably a compact product. So now I gotta once again wait for all this to go through, and I'll probably find that there's still a problem. Who knows, maybe it was upset because it was trying to boot from that optical drive and the media was in that one. I don't think so, I'm pretty sure it identified this one, the Hitachi LG drive. But whatever. So, now we gotta get this party started. I should probably get out a tripod, but I'm not going to do that because I am lazy! Incompatible! Well. Windows XP shouldn't be in Apple. I don't really care about what's on the hard drive, so... Unpartitioned space. Yeah, I probably actually did erase it. So I'll go ahead and install Format NTFS. Which is going to take forever, because it's 40 gigs. Hopefully it'll actually get through the process. If it doesn't, I don't really care. There's nothing on the drive I care about anyway, so... I guess there's that. Now I just gotta play the waiting game. Now is about when it will decide that it is going to fail. I wish the other RAM stick worked, but I'll probably search through my collection of PC-133 and find another one that'll hopefully work in this machine. It seems to be very picky about memory modules. Okay, now we're checking the drive. Or, well, it was checking the drive. Now it's sending files to the drive! That's actually a rather quick process. Look at that. I'm sure there'll be another snag somewhere along the way, like, maybe there is a problem with the single drive cable, it doesn't quite work right, I don't know, but, uh, well, that's producing a rather interesting wire pattern on the LCD, it'll be interesting to see if that, uh, lasts through the final video, though I doubt it will survive the video compression on YouTube. Probably should clear out the, uh, CPU heatsink, that's a kind of a mess. Rebooting. Or, well, when I do that. And I'll probably try and boot from the CD ROM again. I don't know, I didn't think I erased the hard drive, but maybe I did. I have to wonder if there's an updated flash BIOS for this thing. Well, that much is still working. There we go. Windows 2000 Professional. That's what I love to see. A lot better suited for something like this than Windows XP is. Well, XP did work. And if I put more RAM in it, it probably would have been fine. 128 megs really is not enough. Okay. Unfortunately, I think drivers are going to be a problem. Doing an internet search really doesn't reveal much. In fact, most of what it reveals is for other systems. So I'm going to have to figure out what the actual model is and go from there. 
probably remove the CD since I don't think it needs it. That was a lovely sound that drive just made. Yeah, I think it's going to need another driver. Hmm. They can prompt me. Network identification wizard. Well, that's kind of funny. I have no network card installed. I wonder what it's doing. I don't need this screen. It's startup. Get out of here. I'm going to do some digging and see if I can find any drivers for this. Well, I'll be an Unky's Monkle. It actually has a driver. Wow. That's a surprise. Of course, being Intel 810, it should have a driver. This monitor is not really agreeing at all. Look at that. That's terrible. I don't even know if the camera's picking it up. Looks like I'm going to have to do some uh, investigating in that. Okay, so I noticed that the monitor was running at 75, excuse me, 75 hertz. So I changed it to 60. The problem is still there. You may be able to see it in the edge there. But at least it's mostly gone. And that I can certainly live with. So I think we'll just leave it like that. Good enough for me. At the lower resolutions, it doesn't even exist at all. But I think I'll just leave it alone. I'll see if there's any more drivers I need to install. Really should have installed a network card before doing any of this crap, but it doesn't really matter. Alright, well for once my life isn't a total comedy, and it actually seems to have all the drivers except for one, and that is the audio. I don't think that's going to be too difficult to add, not that I really care, I don't really intend on using any speakers with this machine anyway, but uh, let's get some video light on that. That is an ESS, ES1989S audio chipset, so at least I know what it is, and I can find a driver for it, if I really even care, which frankly I don't. So I guess there's that. The system itself, I believe, is even running Service Pack 4. I think that ISO image that I downloaded had Service Pack 4 on it. My actual disk does not. Yeah, we're already running Service Pack 4, so... Mostly fully up to date. But I think that's going to conclude the video, because it's run out for quite a significant amount of time. It was only a Windows installation, plus some other miscellaneous ranting. Thank you for watching. I wish this mouse wasn't so difficult to use on a bed. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And this is CP666 signing off. I hope to see you next time. Till then. A little bit of a postscript. I installed another memory module. You can't really see it that well turn on the video light, you should be able to see it a little bit better. And so now, I should have about 384 megabytes of installed memory. So I found a 256 megabyte memory module in there. It's a lot of memory for PC-133. Now, 383, 384, same deal. Well, I figured out where my Ethernet card went. I put it in there because I thought that, that would improve the performance of this machine because, of course, it's based on an NVIDIA Enforce 4 chipset, and those are garbage. Why should anybody be surprised about that? And, of course, it didn't. So that could come out of there. That machine's not going to miss it anytime soon, anyway. So put it in here. Now, we should have an Ethernet card. stupid thing decided it doesn't want to focus, I guess. But, that is promising. I think it's only a 10100 card, but it doesn't really matter. don't really care that much. Let's see.
open up Idiot Exploiter. Oh boy. Look at that. It actually works. Well, mostly. As well as Internet Exploder 5.5 can work. Anyway, that's well and truly it for the video. I don't have anything else to say, and really this is just dragging on far longer than I really intended for it to do. So. That's it. That's all. Stay tuned for a Windows 2000 unofficial update video at some point in the very, mm, I don't want to say near future. At some point in the future, we'll just say that.